Marini, he could be in here, he's all alone, he's gone! Sensation at Wembley from Sunderland and Fabio Marini. Got through to Phillips, and still might. Phillips is clear, Kevin Phillips! The nationwide league player of the year is now the nation's leading scorer of the season. McGeady! Deep one again. Watson is right in there. So too is Hallam. And Porterfield! Oh, Porterfield has scored! And Sunderland, the underdogs, are in the lead. It's on the far post. And Clark hits the cross. And Quinn wins it. Niall Quinn! Which is there again. Charlie White trying to get onto that. White did. It's Aidan McGeady! It's in! Hello and welcome back to the What The Fork Sunderland Preview Podcast. Sunderland on an absolutely terrific run of form in the league, winning six in the last seven. However, League One action is on hold this week as Sunderland travel to Wembley, aiming to be the champions of pizza, effectively. Um, in the white corner, though, looking to make sure that Sunderland's Wembley heartache continues as Tranmere Rovers. And to preview Sunday's Papa John Trophy final, to give it its full name, is Matt from This Is Tranmere Podcast. Matt, how are you doing? Are you all right? Not too bad. Hopefully, you know, we're um, we're looking to inflict more untold misery and suffering on, on Sunderland fans at we Wembley. Don't, we don't like Wembley, but when it's been taken away from us that we can't actually go, we suddenly all like it again and want to go back down. It's the same for us. What We've been lucky, and you, yourselves, of course, you, you've been, uh, you went twice in a year, didn't you? Or twice in like three months. And twice we went six weeks or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we went th- three times in three years, three playoff finals and, and won two of them back to back. But I was thinking this the other day. That um, for you, for you lot to go down, how long is it? About seven, eight hours on a coach. Uh, seven hours. Easy, yeah, yeah. From yeah, easy, and, yeah, like, and then you know, if, if you're in Birmingham, it's about two and a half. I was talking to my mates, and I was like, "We're in Merseyside. We're like the perfect distance away to have the right amount of drink on the way down." Do you know <laughs> what I mean? We're like four and a half, five hours, which is yeah. You know, we leave at like seven. We leave on the coach at seven. One stop off the services take over that get down to Wembley for midday and you've just had your five hours is the perfect amount you've had like seven or eight beers seven or eight Australia tinnies and you're just ready to go aren't you when you walk into the green man or the torch yeah perfect. I mean last time there was I was talking the other day and someone was like oh you know what I normally plan like four days to do this but I remember the it was Charlton and the Portsmouth game when we both went in about six weeks and if I'm honest with you um, I mean everyone's had a different experience but I remember getting in the ground and everyone was just hanging we were just hanging and it was just like oh god but then you score a goal and you lift up and stuff like that but um i enjoyed the last efl we'll call it efl trophy um pizza that trophy was when you all took over trafalgar square it was all them photo, like the oh, videos great. of like just the entire sunderland the entire city of sunderland was down in london taking it over that was great i think we apparently the the second time was even better with the charlton game but i i decided to have more of a, a quiet one that time but there was yeah we were all over nelson's column and stuff like that there'd be a there'd be hell to pay if we did that now we'd probably get a <laughs> sanction um to be fair um straight from the off i think you know we talked about um the good form from from our side and obviously we're doing really well but Trammy is also on form you've won four your last five you've lost once that was at home uh Crawley on Saturday yeah how, how good has the form been in general it's been ever since obviously we started that we um Mickey Mellon left in the summer the man who, who got us your back-to-back promotions and was gonna Dundee keep United. us up last year he went up to Dundee and we really like a lot of times when managers leave, it, it's weird. Like normally a manager leaves because you hate him and you sack him because he's doing rubbish. Or, you know, if, if he leaves for another club, it's normally, you know, even then it's like he's deserted us. It was 
a real one-off for him to leave and go up there. And most Chami fans, like myself included, were all like, good luck to him. He's gone up. He's always wanted to go back to Scotland and prove himself at a big club. And I know they've only just you know, got back in the top flight, but Dundee United are a big club. And so his assistant, Michael Jackson, yes, let's all laugh at the name, Michael Jackson, um, <laughs> got the job. And uh, we were all excited. He amassed a great squad, you know, COVID permitting. I think there was a lot of players we were able to get who normally you might not be able to, you know, because money was probably, you know, the, the salary cap had come in and stuff like that. And we were all excited. We all thought, you know, it's perfect, the continuity of, of Jackson coming in. And we were just an absolute disaster for the first 10 games. Just a, a, so poor, like getting absolutely thumped left, right and centre, like 4 nils, 5 nils, turned over at home by you know, Cheltenham's 3 nil, Crawley 4 nil away, getting battered. And he got sacked. And we brought in Keith Hill, the ex-Rochdale uh, Bolton manager. And we, we'd gone on a run. When Jackson got sat, we put our assistant manager and the youth team manager in charge. And they went on this run. They won like seven on the run. And that got us, you know, FA Cup. Even in the, this trophy, got us back in there. And the league wins, we got us back into contention because we were in like 18th or something. This was October. And, you know, we were down in 18th place. Keith Hill come in and we carried on the run. But some fans, there was a bit of, you know, People didn't like him. He, you know, we don't get on with Bolton. That's a real horrible rivalry we've got. And um, he, there was rumours he was a Bolton fan. He'd managed them last year. He's not. He's a Man yeah. United fan. He's just from Bolton. And then um, he's turned it around. We've been on. We've been on like a couple, like three times in the last couple of months. We've been the form team in the country. And then you know, Man City come along and do that stupid twenty-one wins. Who cares about you? You're in. A, it's not even the same game we're playing, is it? Um, but we look. We've looked like a real good side. Like, and it's unusual, even when we've been good under Mickey in the last couple of years, in terms of a football and team, the te- the football we've played and the stuff when we've done it, and we've done it quite a lot, like consistency. Um, we've looked a good side. We just we seem to have these aberrations at home where uh, bizarrely our away form is the best in years. I think we've lost seven at home, something like that. And even on these great runs, like you say, Crawley last Saturday was a they fully deserved it. We were terrible. One nil flattered us, to be honest. A couple of weeks ago, we lost at home to Stevenage, and I, I think at that time we'd won six on the bounce. Then we lose at home to St- you know, and we'd beaten teams around us. We'd beaten Forest Green, we beat Carlisle, we beat Newport, and then we come up against these teams where you, you look on paper and fans go, okay, that's a home banker. There's three points, and we just don't turn up. And I don't know if it's because we're playing so many you know Saturday Tuesday games, but we've got a reasonably big squad, but. You know, it's just, we have been in good form. We've picked back up again. That was a big win last night down at South End 2-0. And first half last night, we were outstanding. It's probably one of the best we've played probably this season, the most complete 45 minutes. We should have been out of sight. but And then second half, we just, you know, didn't get out of first gear, very relaxed. And it puts us two points off the top, you know. And it's going to be interesting. Same as yourselves. I mean, you're absolutely flying. It terrified me looking at your form. <laughs> it looks like Jesus Christ. We always seem to come up against teams in this tournament. We came up against Peterborough in the quarterfinal when they were the form team in the country. Then we went to Oxford in the semi. I think they'd won like eight on the run, 10 unbeaten, and we went and beat them. So it's one of them where our form isn't as good as it has been. But if we can keep con- consistent, it's a weird one. I'm sure the same for you and your fans and yourself, even there. I don't really care about the result in a weird way it's for both of us isn't it it's all about promotion but yeah I was swap- it's weird to say that about a cup final isn't it i would swap promotion for, for for this i think if anything it would be nice to get the um to get that wembley hoodoo off our back i think for us be nice i suppose it's like you want to see your team lift a trophy but it is like a trophy that's sponsored by a pizza company, which kind of devalued yeah. it an awful lot. And it's got under 21 teams in it. Like yeah. it's just, it just it's a bizarre us... competition, really. Yeah. Well, we, like we all, like I said, I'm, I'm boycotting at the start of the season, like the last two years, I've not paid any attention, not watched a single game on I follow. And then I mean, you were probably the same. It got to, we got to the quarterfinals and all of a sudden you go, What's going on here? So I, can I maybe I'll maybe I'll I won't watch the quarterfinal, but but I'll just keep a closer look on on the Sky Sports app. And then we got to the semi, and then then it was like we, we openly on our pod we we openly said, look, we're ten coats. We will be covering the semi final. Yeah. We will be watching it. And you, you know, it was on Sky. We watched it. We got through, and you know, it, it, we, you were the team we wanted. You know, we we had a bit of a run with Lincoln a few years ago when they pipped us to the National League title. So there was a bit of a 
know, when you get these rivalries for a couple of years, don't you? When you suddenly we have it with Portsmouth. Bit, yeah. I was going to say you and Pompey have, have become yeah. a new one, haven't you? Where two huge sides just can't seem. I saw a tweet from one of our fans last night, Jamie Bears, who um, used to work in the club shop, and he said, "I swear, Sunderland and Portsmouth play each other every two weeks. Nine it, times since we've come down. Nine, nine times. times. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, it's." It's looking to be, I, mean, I don't want to tempt fate or anything, but it should be, and sound like a cliche, it should be a bloody good game of football, all things considered. Yeah, because both bang in form. I mean, yeah. the, the one thing that, in a really weird way, and we've talked about this off air a little bit, but one of the worst strikers, that have, well, the worst striker, maybe Sands, Andy Gray, that I've ever seen play for something is James Vaughan. But you can't deny he's in terrific form for Tramier, scoring 21 and 30, I think it is, across all um, appearances in every competition. Yet he's definitely out, which yeah. a lot of Sunderland fans were happy with because you could write the headlines. But how big of a loss is, is he to Sunday? He's a massive blow in, in such that he's, you know, like I said, I think he scored 19 in the league. Yeah. In like 25 starts. He's in it's the form of his entire career. He's 32. And it's not just his goals. Like the whole way we play was based around him. It he wouldn't we weren't we played like a 4-3-3. And it's not he it's not like he's isolated up top. He really isn't. It's and he got injured. It was one of those annoying ones. We were three 0 up at uh late in Orange. Oh sorry, three one up with 10 minutes to go. And one of their defenders like does this really bad like clattering. Do you want know the defender goes? I've had enough of this. I'm going to take him out. And it's like his left, his knee got like locked underneath. But he played on for like five minutes, as you often do with like a knee knock, because you think, oh, it hurts, but then it goes off. And then he just sat down and Joe you know, sat down on the pitch and did that. You know, the I need to go off motion, and everyone was like, oh god, no. And then then there was rumors rife on social media for like a week going. Some people going, he's out. For, he's out for the season. It's you know, and then someone going, no, no. It's a knock. He's in contention for Saturday. So we were all on tent hooks um, last Saturday for the Crawley game going, you know, is he going to be in the, in the thing? And it comes out after that, you know, it, he's, he needs an operation. We won't know. Yeah, I think he had the operation yesterday. So we won't know that, you know, it's one of them. And the swelling goes down after the operation. We'll see if, if he'll be able to play again this season. Some people, apparently it's six weeks, but six weeks pretty much is the season, isn't it, this year? Yeah. So, it's a, it is a huge blow for us. And there was a real meltdown on like the forums and on Twitter, people going, oh God, it's a good job we've got 50 points because I'd be worried about us getting relegated now <laughs> without Vaughan. And it's like, we're not a one-man team. He is probably the best striker in League Two this year in terms of all-around playing. He was vital to us, but we've got players there. We, we've changed, we've had to change the way we play because we signed David Nugent, the old um, Preston Leicester, Middles for striker, England, one in England, one for England, one, course, one in yeah. one. Yeah. What a goal. Record. One centimetre out against um, Andorra. I mean, before but, he nicked that off as well, if I remember <laughs> rightly. Yeah. Like sprinted in, you've never seen him sprint so fast to get it. But he's not played much, so he's his match fitness isn't there. And he's, you know, he's a wonderful football, you can see that, but he can't, he's a different type of player to Vaughan. So we, we played him up front on Saturday and it didn't quite work. We didn't have, you know, the whole team didn't play well. But, and that, so the meltdown was even worse. And we like, we've lost to Crawley at home. God, you know, it, it, the season's over. And then we go and put in a wonderful, I know South End is right down the bottom and struggling, but you know, first half, like, yeah, yeah. Like, real. They're just, they're a bit of a basket case club, aren't they? They're constantly threatening to be wound up. You look down at HMRC every few weeks and it just keeps getting put back, postponed, postponed. So it is, it's a blow, but you look at the performance last night, we put um, Paul Lewis, who's like a, a centre mid and he, he played as like a false nine last night and he scored. I don't know if you've seen the goals from last night, but our first goal, actually, yeah. our first goal last night was outstanding. It was like bloody Arsenal. It was, well, as I said on Twitter, it's like Arsenal, but 2004 Arsenal, like good Arsenal, not junk <laughs> Arsenal now, booting balls in off players chests and thighs um and that just show when we get the ball down and play we we can play and i'm hoping that wembley the pitch should be good it should suit us trying to play because our home pitch even though we spent some people we spent like a couple of million pound in the summer so investors bought six percent of the club and the money from that um enabled us to redo our pitch because last year like a drain collapsed and it, it, well, it was it was a, it was like a joke a disgrace um and so it's, but it's not, it, it's bobbling a bit, it's ripping up. There's a lot of games played on it. Liverpool ladies play on it as well. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that we don't, not a lot of us, me included, don't like that relationship with Liverpool. Um, they've moaned about it as well. And it's like, well, you know, go and play at Anfield then, you know, if you want to moan. We, we let you, I know they pay us, but 
so that's the thing with thinking that a lot of the you know, when we go away, the pitches are slightly better and it, it helps us play. And Wembley, you know, you and the way you're playing, I've been keeping a close eye. Like I always keep an eye on Sunderland as well. I've, I've got, I, I remember you lot coming up when I was a kid. And I remember when I think you'd already gone up, it was the year first 96, pro- it was. Yeah. Was it the first promotion? Because you went straight back down, didn't you, under Peter Reid? It was the last we season did. at Roker Park. You had one year in the Prem, didn't you, at Roker Park? Yeah. And then um, you came to us on the last day of the season and, and we gave you the entire cop and the Johnny Kings. So you had 7,000, I think it was more fans, yeah, the Sunderland fans. We beat you 2 0. But it was when everyone was singing that uh, Cheer Up Peter Reid song. <laughs> Good and like I remember your fans were just like obviously you've won the league, so you're all high, like on a great high anyway, but you were just so like that you packed all the boozers round, you couldn't move for red and white. I remember what was there with my dad, I was like a little kid, and um these were all just so nice fans, and you were like, Oh, you, you know, I think we were a nice club to come to as well. You know, there's loads of pubs, it's a nice place, it's not that far for you either, is it? Not that you have to go down to bloody yeah. Bournemouth or somewhere. And so I've always had like a soft spot, and I just feel for because we were another club who we got promoted in 1991 to the championship and then it took us 27 years to have another promotion or just you know anything win anything or have any forward momentum whatsoever so knowing about your Wembley case and you know how I've always said about the people up north like you know the Mackhams the Geordies the Smoggies you're so like just optimistic about everything always you know what I mean (laughs) Like if someone had to give me bad news, I'd always be like, get me someone from up north, northeast to pass on some bad news because they just have a way of doing it. And you're just being so optimistic and upbeat. Gallows about humor, it. I believe it's called, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a real I've also there's a real affinity between Merseyside, Birkenhead, the we're aware of from Liverpool Scousers, and the like northeast, because we're very similar the same as I imagine, like people from Belfast. And the Scots, we all get on because we all feel like, you know, without going into politics and socialism and, and stuff like that, but we've all been like shit on and put put upon by, you know, governments. And we've all had trade and stuff like that. And our, our football clubs, we all feel like we've just been, we're looked down upon, aren't we, by all the people down south as like these, you know, we all wear flat caps, work down the mines. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're all like scumbags up here. And I, know, I think that's another reason why, when we go down to Wembley, we've always got a spring in our step, haven't we, about ourselves? And we're like, hello, oh, we're it's funny. Than this. I even wrote this question. It's funny <laughs> you should mention what I said, you know, how many fans do you think would have made the journey down? Because it's a shame because you talked before about Sun and getting down and taking over Trafalgar Square. To be fair to the, the Portsmouth fans, they brought loads, but it's now a journey for them the next yeah. day. Tramier fans would have probably been in with us. Um, yeah. It's kind of a, a disappointing way that not just we're missing out, I feel like, it would have been a better atmosphere because you've got two northern clubs down there yeah. would have probably came down the night before got together had a few beers sang some songs like. it would have been a good advert for football and you know, i hate using one of those ways where they go oh it's just a great advert for football but like because you know we are, like i said i've got no reason to think there's any animosity between the two clubs i think we get on you know yeah. you're a big club we're a small club and there's that you know we, we know what we are both of us do you know what i mean and I think the fans, of course, like you said gallows humor and self depreciation. What you know, what choice have you had as fans in the last like thirty years, <laughs> other than to be like that? Same as us, where all you can do is go, oh god! If you don't laugh, you'll cry because yeah. you've got to just go. And there's got to be like a club of your size, and I, I, I truly think you finally, with Lee Johnson, got the right man at the right time in charge. I think you will go up this year. I, don't, I think you'll. I could see you winning the league. Like you're like you're right there now, aren't you? Fourth, two points or like couple two points of points behind, off. I think. Yeah, two points I, behind. I really think this is it. It's he's the right guy, and you finally got like a real good squad and some good players like that. Charlie White, like White looks like, you know, I mean, he's never going to be a a top championship Premier League player, is he? But he's the kind of player you needed. You didn't need Will Grigg. You didn't need James Vaughan, did you? You needed a guy like him who knows what it's about. And that Luke 09, like he's, you know what? He, he should play for you for the, he should play for you the rest of his career, shouldn't he? I just love him. Just he just he epitomizes everything that I, I like in in a Sunderland player. He kind of and and some people think he lacks in quality. I, I really don't. I think he's I think he's a great player. I think he's definitely lower end championship. I'd be more than happy to yeah. to take him upwards. Um, talking about sort of your squad, I was looking through your squad as well, and obviously 
a lot of it I was looking through the strikers and who you were putting instead of James Vaughan. But then I noticed how much it had sort of changed. And I noticed that you'd obviously brought in Jay Spearing. I knew that one. That makes sense. He's a he's a scouser. He's obviously yeah. going to go back to home. Um, Liam Feeney, who had a brilliant season last season for Blackpool. He was like an assist machine. Um, there's a lot of League One experience in that team. It's not like we're playing a team of people I haven't heard of. How impressive have the likes of like George Ray, Jay Spearing, Liam Feeney been this season there? George Ray is a, a weird one because we signed him last year. It January, like, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, George Ray was... Um, is it Peter Clark? are you thinking of That's as well? That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. Yeah, well, George Ray played League One for for, for, um, for Crew. He was the Crew's captain and when we signed him. But yeah, Peter Clark came in last Jan, like um, when fans could still come in. And he's one where he's 38. He might be 39, but centre-half, he never had any pace to lose. And a position like that, it's all up here, and especially playing League Two, you know, you you wouldn't know he's thirty nine. He could be twenty nine. And like you say, Jay Spearin's come in thirty two. He he didn't start well under Jackson when we were on that terrible run. He was he was atrocious, and something just wasn't quite right. And then he's been on his game, and you can see he's you know just quality. And like you say about Feeney, like we've got. Well, like so when we look at that squad, we've got Kane Wallery, who was the leading assist maker for Swindon, who won the league last year. We've got Feeney, who was the Blackpool player of the year. Yeah. High, most assists for Blackpool. We've got Callum McDonald, who was their young player of the year last year at Blackpool, um, left back, and we've signed him on a permanent deal. We had him on loan originally, and we made it a permanent deal in January. And like you say, there's, there's League One quality all over the team. And so we should be challenging at the top. You know, it's annoying that if, if you take that first 10, 12 games away where we were diabolical, we'd be someone did the maths. Like, you know, if, if you do like the aggregate score or over the last, I think, uh, 20 games, we're like six points clear at the top. So it's that just, you know, if we hadn't have had that atrocious run at the start, we'd be, you know, clear at the top. But we're right in amongst it. And there is, like you say, that there's real, like, real quality. Even that Danny Lloyd who we signed, he was a free agent. He was released by Salford. And he's not played um, higher than League One. He only played a couple of... I think he played one season for Peterborough there. Um, and he was at Stockport in the National League. And he's a scouser. But he's a, he's absolute quality. Do you know, just when you look at someone and go, he's a, there's a footballer, like a real footballer. And the likes of him, you got your midfield there last night. Feeney played like a, a, a holding midfield role. And on the ball, his passing is just ridiculous. So like you say, you've got a spine there of Clark, Spearing, Feeney, Woolery, Vaughan when he was fit. These players shouldn't really be playing League Two. Yeah, because a lot of the players are players that have played predominantly, I suppose, League One or even Championship. When you look at Jay yeah. Spearing, I think he had a few years of Bolton, obviously, well, numerous years of Bolton in the, in the Championship. And to be fair, I know Bolton are viewed very differently, but they had a few solid seasons in the Championship, if I remember rightly. I'm sure yeah. someone will tell me if I'm wrong. But He was at Leicester as well. So he was. So he yeah. was. Um, it gives us both a bit of a rest, I suppose, in the league, which I don't know if I really want one, but I suppose if it's Wembley, fair enough. And you're touching it before, like the game is like, if we lose, it's not going to feel like I'm losing the, the League Cup or the FA Cup. It's, it's difficult to describe. Like, I remember being very devastated that we lost against Portsmouth, but it was because I was there in the day. I'm more looking forward to Sunday without too many nerves, but it's a weird trophy, as we've kind of said before. It's League One and League Two fans when you could go actively boycott it in a lot of the circumstances. And I remember that they used the fact that the attendances had gone up as a reason for this is why it's good that we've had B teams in, but it was actually just Sunderland being in League One and just up the ante a little bit with the yeah. attendances. But how do Tranmere fans view the Papa John's trophy as a whole? Has it changed in the, very much the way that your opinion has recently? I think... The majority of fans, I'd say like 90, 95% were all of the opinion. When we got back in the Football League, I will not be going to these games. Um, our lowest ever, you know, competitive attendances are the last few years, group stage. I think it was Man City under 21s. And that's, you know, that got some hell of, you know, their players, the squad there. I think it was like 450 there. And so there's a real... You know, there's always going to be that small core of diehards who will go support the club no matter what. But the majority of us were like, no. like, And it all comes down to the under-21 teams being allowed in. In the, It's a slap in the face. The whole point of this competition was my first ever game was the Leyland AFCUP Cup final in 1990. And that was what this trophy was called then. And we beat Bristol Rovers 2-1. And I was five years old. My brother was like seven or eight. 
And we all went down. It was a huge, big family thing. Like the whole of Birkenhead seemed, there must have been a cheap ticket deal or something because we all went down. <laughs> and like, that was the day that I was always going to be a German fan because my granddad was the one who started it all off many years ago. But like, I went down there, I had my little kit on. My brother had his goldie shirt on, flags, and all like our southern family, the Charlton fam- family were there. They met us at Wembley and we won 2 1. It was a lovely sunny day. We beat Bristol Rovers. And like that was the day that I sort of, you know, it cemented it. It was like, this is it for me now. I'm, I'm a Charlton fan. I've since said that I should have kept the receipt and gone, <laughs> I was promised glorious sunny days and cup wins. And th- it seems to have gone downhill ever since this. Um, but yeah, it, it's. You know, we saw this as very much a, probably the same as you said in the group stage. It was a case of rest all your first team players as many as you can without getting a fine. And just, you know, if we go out in the group stage, I really don't care. Like then, previous two years, we had gone out in the group stage and we've had some batterings like Shrews, we beat 6 0 or something stupid like that. And then, but then this year, we won a couple of games, we got through the group and it was like, okay. And then when we, we started going on the run and it was a case of, I don't really care about these Papa John's games, but you want to keep the momentum going and, you know, winning is a mentality. We kept winning. And then it was, it was when we beat Peterborough. I think we all, when we drew Peterborough, it was probably one of the hardest draws we could have got, but it was at home. And, you know, they were flying at their hell of a team. It was such an attacking side. They always are. And we beat them 2-1. They got a late penalty, like injury time. And we thoroughly, everyone who, I didn't watch that, but everyone who watched it went, we with a better side. And even their manager, Darren Ferguson, came out and said, they've got no complaints. They were by far the better side. And he made similar points to you where he said, they've, they've got players here who shouldn't be playing at League Two. They are, and this was some of them as our reserve players even. And then we, a lot of us did start taking notice, sadly, of, of the semi final because suddenly we were like, well, hang on a minute, we're a game away here from Wembley. I know we can't go, but, you know, we, we, it's become a bit, it's a bit of a joke with our, our fan base. We call it Pratt and Park South because we've been there, you know, three years. 2017, 18, and 19. And then we didn't get to go. Our argument is that season never finished. So the 2019, 20 season never finished. So just because we didn't get there that year, it doesn't count. So for consecutive years, it's nice to, you know, keep that thing going. It, we would have loved to have gone down there, but as we've said, but we can't. But yeah, some fans are still going, play a complete reserve team on Sunday because we've mm-hmm. got Grimsby on Wednesday straight after, you know, they're going, don't risk anyone. But I'm sure if you spoke to any of the players, you know, they're the first, first team players who, who have been rested throughout the majority, even in the semi final, like Spear and Vaughan, and who else didn't play? Like the Spine, uh, Peter Clark, none of them played. They were on the bench, and Vaughan and Spear and came on at 2 0. But every single one of them will want to play. Every single one of them. No one will be going, rest me for Grimsby on Wednesday. Every single one will want to play. And no matter what 11 he puts out, I don't think any of the fans will have any qualms. Obviously, if Peter Clark, Jay Spearin, and Kane Wallery all play, and Liam Feeney, and they all do the hamstrings. Then, yeah. But then it's one of them. You could pull your hamstring walking down the stairs. You know, you could, an anvil could come through your roof and kill you. Do you know what I mean? You can't, <laughs> this is the, you can't live your life constantly going, don't do something because something bad might happen. It's like, yeah. we've got a chance. Like yourself, you, you, this is, you'll never, your fan base must be thinking, we'll never have a better chance of breaking that Wembley hoodoo. It feels like that. in a cup. Like, you know, it's not, we're not a Portsmouth. We're not, you know, it's not a playoff final. There's no pressure on. The, the, my one thing I said, I said last night in our post-match one when we previewed uh, Sunday's game, I just said, I just don't want to get battered. You know, I don't want to turn up and get beat 4 5 nil, and it just be a complete washout. It, 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 I wouldn't really care. It'd just be annoying. You'd be like, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? A bit embarrassing. If we get beat 3-2, get beat 1-0, get beat 2-1, just put, up, put in a performance but lose, I'd have no qualms. And I'm going to enjoy it. Like, I haven't had a drink properly. Like I've had two beers this year, like two beers, and that was on the anniversary of my dad's death. Um, no, sorry, and that's well. There's another one, right? My dad passed away on March 14th, 2017. Right, this final falls on the anniversary of his death and it's Mother's Day, so like it's all coming. To, I don't want to give more omens for some of them fans <laughs> why they should be concerned, but things are coming together here. We're well, like, always concerned at Wembley, no matter what. Yeah, it, yeah well, there's there's more to come. So it's the anniversary of my dad's death, three years, sorry, four years. And then it's Mother's Day and I'm going to be having a drink for the first time. And I've got, I'm not not saying I'm superstitious, like, you know, football fans, we aren't, we're not a superstitious bunch, are we as football fans? But yeah, the exact, can be. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the drink that I drank on the last two years going down for the playoff finals we've won has been 330 mil Australia cans. 
And I was like, I need them to drink on this day. So we're treating it as if we were we were going to start drinking. Like, even, you know, can't do it in person, but we were all going to like Zoom each other and be like, let's start drinking at seven. You know, like we would as if we were going on a coach. But then we went, let's be a bit more sensible. Let's say midday, we're all going to get together online and have a few cans, you know, maybe watch the previous highlights together, somehow like that. Um, so that come kickoff time, we'll be we'll be merry. And I say I haven't had a proper drink in like over a year since the pandemic started. So I'm going to be absolutely flying by three pm. It feels like an occasion without the um, without the pressure, doesn't it? That's how it yeah. feels for us. It feels like it's an opportunity to um, get that Wembley hoodie off our back. And I think again, I wouldn't want to get battered, but I'm hopeful that if we were to get beat, it would be it would be narrow. But I think. If we did get beat, it would be like, oh, fuck. And then we'd crack on and play. I think yeah. it's Accrington on, on Wednesday and hopefully put in a performance. But I think, I mean, I'm confident for once, but it's Wembley. It's, I'm, I suppose, in a way, I'm superstitious. I'm not going to wear my colours because I've always wore colours when I've gone to Wembley, so I've decided not to. Um, there's little things like that that are sort of playing on my mind. So I suppose I care more than I'm probably letting on. Yeah, um, it's one of them, isn't it? It's at the same time going, I really don't care, but come 3 p.m., sat in front of the TV on Sunday. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be going, yeah, referee. <laughs> yeah, I felt like that with Portsmouth. I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. If we lose, we lose. And then, like, when we scored in the last minute of extra time, I think that was a, one of the best celebrations I've ever been part of, Sands, St. James's Park, the past couple of seasons. Um, i tell you what was quite an interesting topic, because I didn't want them to do this. I was like, no, no point, just play it. But obviously, um, your vice chairman, I think it was, I think actually your chairman had attempted to move the final to May in the hope yeah. that some fans could make it. Now, um, my thought was, nah, just play it because you, you don't know if you delay it, what's going to happen. And also, 10,000 Sunderland fans, I think, would be maximum that could go, 5,000, pointless, really. Um, but what would Tramier's fans thought yeah. on that? Were you like, actually, yeah, let's move it? Or were you same as me? Yeah, I was very much the same as you. And there's nothing we'd love more than, you know, a 7 a.m. start on the booze down there, especially with no pressure. Because the thing about the playoff final is, we've said, I've tried to explain this to like Liverpool Everton fans and Man U fans and my mates. I've gone, you'll never understand what it's like, the pressure of a playoff final. It's not like losing an FA Cup final, a League Cup final, or even like a Champions League or Europa League final. If you lose that, you haven't lost anything. You just haven't won that. A playoff final is your entire season in. 90 or 120 minutes. And if you lose it, that's it. Your season is gone. And it's hard to, in, you know, say, once the whistle goes, it's very hard to enjoy them games because unless, yeah. you know, you're four or five nil up in the first half. So this would have been, you know, it would have been a, a real anomaly in that I would have enjoyed every second of it. And like, say, even if we'd have gone, even if we were four nil down, I think the fans would have been doing congas you know, around the concourse and going, do you know what? It's a day out. We're all absolutely bladded. But yeah, I, I, I was the same as you. I was like, don't bother. Just, you know, we've both got more important things on. If you put it back to May, even if you can only get 10, it's not 10,000 fans. It's still going to be not the same as, you know, you probably would have brought about 50,000. We probably brought about 15, 20. It's not the same. So if you can't do it properly, don't do it. It's like, I don't know if you managed to get 20 games when, were you allowed? Did, were no. you allowed to have any in? We, we no. never came out with tier three. I don't think we, didn't so we, fans we in. had. I think we had three. We had two league games and a Papa John's game, and I didn't bother. I went. I don't want to. Like people, are, aren't enough. you gagging to get back in there and getting like we've got like a trust tent where you know to be a tent where you go and it's brilliant. But like I was like, I don't want to go there and have to sit at a table and have my pint brought to me and then I get in the ground, I get allocated the seat. It's, I can't sit near, you know, I went, I, I want to wait until I can go in and it be normal, you know, and I can, yeah. you know, my mate sitting down next to me and I can, as he goes to sit down, I can lift his chair. So he, he hurts himself, <laughs> you know, I want it to be, you know, back, went back to normal, normal. And yeah, it's the same. It, let's just play this. And you know, whatever happens, happens. Imagine if yeah. you couldn't celebrate if you scored at Wembley and you had to like just like do whatever it is. What is it? You'd link arms or whatever these days or whatever. Yeah, fist bump. Yeah, fist no, bump. Like, nah. Ridiculous, isn't it? No, just just play it and you know let's we'll get on with our season and you know it's, it'd be a it recipe be for same. disaster as well because if if we scored in the last minute of extra time like we did last time, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be staying calm with that. My the emotions no. take over with it. It's like we've seen and a how, few times. How did they expect us? Over. How did, would they expect Sunderland and the Trammy fans to get down there? Normally, you, you'd be, you know, a coach, a 50 person coach, and you'd get, let's, how many, let's get 60 of us on here. I'll stand. Do you know what I mean? Who cares? 
how were we supposed to, would you have been, okay, you're only allowed to have 10 people on a 50 person coach. Well, how's that work financially? The coach still, you know, it, it would, I can't see how it would have worked. The likelihood is, even if you delayed it in May, they would have probably looked at it and gone, actually, it's still not 100% safe to even have 10,000 people there. Because yeah. I know there's dates and things like that. And obviously, I live in Scotland. We don't have the dates, but obviously, I've seen the dates and whatnot. And um, I, I hope I'm wrong, but when you look at the dates, they're kind of very soft dates, I think. Yeah. For the moment. It's, a lot yeah, of things have to change. ambitious, isn't it? I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. And, and my experience of the last dates that we've had and the things that have happened previously, I'm not 100% confident, I've got to be honest. Yeah. Um, and a lot of things that have been said since the start of the pandemic. But Skeptical. Yeah, skeptical is the word, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, I did want to ask sort of one quick question before we go into predictions just to finish off. But um, as I said in the introduction, we're in, we're in great form. Um, James Vaughan would have been the one that worried me. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. But... Lots of our players recently, really good individual performances. Um, where do you think Sunderland can damage you the most? Which players concern you the most from our side? I think it's the big guy up front, Wyke. Is yeah. I, I saw, did he score that goal at Crew the other week? The like bloody oh, that was twenty-five a... yard volley. And then of course you, you got a, an even a ninety-sixth minute equaliser in that game, didn't you? That so you Maguire and Jones that day actually. From Chris Maguire, yeah. yeah. So you, you in the in the same way that you know we've said that we've got players who really shouldn't be playing at League Two. You've got almost an entire squad who really shouldn't be playing League One, should they? And it's certainly the key players there. I mean, you've got Max Power, you know, ex Tranmere came through. He's playing right back now, isn't he? He's reinvented himself as a. Is he your right back? He, he's filling in. It's kind of weird. He, he kind of filled in. Utility we, player. We've got loads of injuries at the back, and he sort of filled in and then played about six games. But then he came back into midfield recently and um, did really, really well. But then we've had more injuries at right back. Like the lad that. Obviously, Luke O'Nine's played most of his time here at right back. He's actually a midfielder. He's played the last six or seven games at centre half and been great. Um, but that's just Luke O'Nine. He can play anywhere. To be honest, he could probably even play in goal. But Max Powers kind of flirted with the right back position in the past few weeks. But I think he'll probably be at right back on um, Sunday because our centre half, Dion Sanderson, is cup tied, so you're probably going to keep Luke nine there. And I don't think Conor McLaughlin, who's our normal or natural right back, is going to be fit in time to play back. So, yeah, he'll probably play right back actually is the short answer. <laughs> yeah, well, Conor McLaughlin's another like you almost he, I swear he's played every position other than goalkeeper for Northern Ireland, hasn't he? So, you've got yeah, right back, it seems you've back. got yeah. quite a lot of very versatile players. <laughs> yeah, it's it's your strikers for me and and just your. I'm not saying that you're quite a direct team, but you know, with Maguire and Wyke, you know, their strengths are physical, you know, players. Maguire's more of a like back in, isn't he? Like type of player. They're not quick, like, you know, like outrageously like quick, pacey players. So yeah, I think more, it's not really any individuals that worry me about you. It's just the form, the momentum, the new manager who seems to be, you know new manager balances there. He's getting everything right. It seems everything for me has fallen into place for you. That's been, you know, certainly the last two years, last th three years, you've been waiting, you know, you've tried Coleman, Ross, um, Parkinson, and it seems like Johnson's the one. So it's more just like this concern of this huge football club. Everything seems to be falling into place. And along we come knocking at the door going, Please don't hurt us. Please go easy on us. <laughs> I no, wish, the, wish it was that easy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Never is with something, but such is life. But it does, you know, it does feel like we're hitting form. Things do feel good at something. I can't deny that. Even one of the more occasionally pessimistic fans, I would say it, it does feel very, very positive at the minute. And I, I so, do feel that there's a lot of good players as opposed to individuals that are doing well in a sticky run of form. It's collectively what? we're doing well. What catastrophe will befall you now? Do you think, uh, like, maybe a wormhole will open at the training ground and suck the team in? Um, I don't know. Uh, a meteorite injury in training. <laughs> yeah, a, a meteorite hitting hitting the training ground. Some some otherworldly force. A co another or, another COVID breakout. We had one yeah, in but, December. <laughs> Something like, you know, we say we, this is, you know, we've got like three days to go before the final. Something catastrophic could happen to both of us here, couldn't it? Yeah. Like, let, let's not count our, like, if this game goes ahead with two fully fit squads, 
barring the current injuries, it will be a miracle with the luck that we've both had in the last 30 years. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed, fingers crossed. For the, more for the so for the league season for both of us, probably. Yeah, of course. That, that, such is life. Um, I tell you what, why don't we then get together as, as fans of both clubs and agree to shake hands, share the cup, not even play the game? <laughs> Good enough. Yeah, and then just go, look, we've both got more important games on Wednesday. We've got Akronton and Grimsby coming up. But it would be even better if they didn't just cut the pizza, uh, cut the trophy off. They just like, got a pizza cutter. That would be the best thing that they could put. Just quarter it and we'll take yeah, two just, quarters each. Just show someone trying to cut the cup with a pizza cutter for an hour and a half on Sunday. Should and just go, look, present, present a pizza. That would be the yeah, best part of it. Just, yeah, do you know what? Just give me a pizza. Give you a pizza. Yeah, just, and we'll all be happy. Go for it. Just be fine. Um <laughs> Last question, as always, predictions. Um, when I give mine first, we normally get beat, so I'll let you give yours first. Um, I I do think we'll lose. I think you'll win. Um, I just think you've got too much quality. I think you've got too much momentum. Uh, I think you'll win. I think you'll beat. You'll win 2-1. But I think it'll be a tight game, and I, I'd like to think we'll put a good account of ourselves in and come out of it going, we gave a good account. We had a go. The better side won on the day, but we didn't embarrass ourselves. And, you know, we go to Grimsby and we go into these last 13 games and go, we, we can take positives from it. You know, the players will, will learn a lot from playing again. Hopefully we'll come out of it and we'll be able to say, look, this is the team who are probably going to win League One this year. And this is where we want to be next year. So you've done yourself proud. So yeah. I do think you'll win. And I think it will be 2-1 to Sunderland. I'm going to go 2 0. I've got a, a fancy. Oh, come on, give us a goal. 2 0. I know, <laughs> I know, but I feel like it's going to be because Charlie Wex had two seasons of being battered and saying he wasn't great and he's been phenomenal this season. I feel like Charlie Wex scoring at Wembley, both goals would kind of be like the resurrection, the full, complete resurrection of, of Charlie White. But um, but Matt, thanks so much for joining me. Um, for people interested, where can we where can we grab your podcast? Uh, podcast or Twitter pages at this is Tramia on Twitter. I'm at Matt Hibbert on Twitter, uh, mainly my football stuff. Um, on Instagram as well, our pages at this is Tramia. I'm at Matt Hibbert 17 on there. It's more my music stuff, but I do do uh, my football stuff. But yeah, um, and we're on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. Uh, just search this is Tramia. Uh, and if you want to leave a nice little uh, five star rating and review on the Apple Podcasts to help the algorithm, and I'm sure with yours as well, why yeah. not do both at the same time? Do you know what I mean? While you're writing one review, write one for the other one as well. But yeah, Best give us a follow do. at this is Tramia on Twitter and at Matt Hibbert, M A T T H I W B E R T. And hopefully, um, hopefully, we're all happy come Sunday evening. In some way, shape, size, or form. And um, <laughs> of course, with, with with this podcast, if you want to subscribe, you can. Um, I believe it's completely free. But if you want to pay me to subscribe, that's even better. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Matt. My pleasure. <laughs>